Hi, this is Sarah Mikesell, and today we're here with Dr. Bill Hollis. He is a practicing veterinarian with Carthage Veterinary Practice in Illinois. So thanks for being with us today, Bill. Thank you, Sarah. So as a practicing vet, um, can you tell us a little bit about how diagnostics play a role in your veterinary practice in regards to PERS? Sure, so when we are working with our producers, it's most important that we first understand, are we looking for the antibody or are we looking for the virus? So by the antibody, has the pig previously been exposed to PERS and are we just trying to identify uh, a previous history? So we're using an antibody test. Most commonly today, we're now looking for the virus and so that's a PCR test that we will okay. gather either a serum sample or now even an oral fluid sample and we'll use that to look for actually the virus itself. Okay, very good. And what about other, other um, issues that are coming up besides, um, besides PERS? Do you use this and how do diagnostics play a role just specifically in your practice? Well, it's, it's critical that we're making good decisions mm -hmm. and in implementing timely decisions. And so uh, both uh, serum and oral fluid are very common diagnostic samples and we can use those uh, critical tests to look for the activity of, of more viruses other than PERS. Right. And, uh, and today with oral fluids, it's also a much easier sample to collect, a much larger sample size. And in both cases, we're really trying to make good decisions, focused decisions on the pathogen that's creating the problems. Right. And, and as we know right. with PERS, when there's multiple organisms involved in an infectious right. process, uh, it's a lot worse. It's much, much worse. And there's just, there's a lot of, of diseases out there that can look like each other, right? I mean, that's part of the problem, right? Well, our challenge is to make uh, decisions based off of the facts. And so right. if we're guessing uh, what could be happening or we're using a previous experience to try and diagnose a current problem, uh, being specific is going to make us much more targeted. Right. And uh, in some of our uh, herds, we're, we're actually looking at three different populations. So we're looking at gilts and gilt entry, right. and we're looking at the sow farms themselves and how they are uh, developing and growing, and then we're looking at the baby pig population, all which could be on site together. So we're right, looking at right. various different populations within the group. Very good. Now, you do some consulting internationally. How, how are diagnostics used the same or differently globally? That's an excellent question because around the world uh, we're not as fortunate as we are here in the United States with some of our laboratories. There are places we go that have outstanding laboratories, but right. here in the United States we're very fortunate that uh, the universities as well as some private labs and, and uh, the companies that provide us the tools are able to get very timely, very accurate, specific mm -hmm. diagnostics. Uh, some of the places we go in Asia are just begging for that yeah. type of uh, diagnostics. And then um, some of our, our nearby uh, partners, say to the north in Canada or to the south in Mexico, right. they have access to those labs. And so uh, really being able to get the samples to the lab quickly right. and then having a, a lab that is validated, that is uh, well, uh, well known and, and can respond quickly with results, mm -hmm. that's where it's most important. And it's really, regardless of where you're at in the world, right? I mean, diagnostics are playing a critical role for you. Oh yes, and so uh, in many of those regions where we go, uh, there are uh, multiple diseases, not just those that we're challenged with here in the United States, but uh, say a pylon effect of multiple other diseases in the area. Very good. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Bill. Thank you, Sarah.